I kind of like this a lot, actually, for, yeah. for what it is. Like, it's not quite the profile I tend to lean toward, but if I'm wanting something that's kind of sweet but not too sweet, this is kind of... Kind this of in is that kind wheelhouse. of in that wheelhouse where I'm like, oh, this is a bottle I might want to reach for. Yeah. Let's get it back on the palate. Okay. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And we are back with another first sip episode, which is something we do every Monday where we've got something in our glass and we don't have any clue what it is. Nope. We draw a sample at random from our first sip sample pool comprised of bourbons and rye that we've never tried before. So there's no familiarity with the products. We taste it totally double blind to give you the most honest opinions possible. We give it a rating. We tell you if the price, once we find that out, will change our rating. And then we find out what we're sipping along with you. Let's get right into the nose on this glass. This smells like raw broccolini. Not broccoli, broccolini, the, the skinny, the tall skinny stems. That's what I'm getting, like 100%. There is an earthiness here, but there's a lot of sweetness here to my nose. I'm getting a lot of ethanol too. I'm not getting much ethanol at all, oh, but I I'm getting a lot of concentration of flavor in my nose. Okay. I mean, Craig Mack had that song, Flavor in Your Ear, so I guess you could get flavor in your nose, too. Sure, why not? Taking it back to the 90s there. Taking it back to the old school, because I'm an old school <laughs> who's so cool. If you want to get down, let me show you the way. Whoop, there it is. Let me hear you say, whoop, there it is. All right, I'm back. Here we are. All right, let's get into this. Okay. This tastes very earthy. Yeah, but that sweetness is still there. I'm not getting it. I'm really? May, like maybe I'm hunting for it. Okay, what kind of earthy though? Let's talk it out. Kind of like a dirt earthy, not grass, like below the grass. <laughs> That's where they keep the dirt, last I checked. Yeah, it's yeah. like earth earthy. <laughs> okay, man, to me, this is a really nice combination of earthiness and sweetness. You're getting the earthiness up front. I'm getting the sweetness up front with the earthiness underneath. I might be getting that sweetness at the end, kind of on the roof of my mouth, but I'm gonna need another step to yeah. verify. I kind of like this a lot, actually, for, yeah. for what it is. Like, it's not quite the profile I tend to lean toward, but if I'm wanting something that's kind of sweet, but not too sweet, this is kind of- It's kind of in that kind wheelhouse. of in that wheelhouse where I'm like, ooh, this is a bottle I might want to reach for. Yeah. Let's get it back on the palate. Okay. Yeah, it got a smidgey bit more drying with the oak on the second sip, mm -hmm. but ever so slightly. I feel like everything, every flavor I'm getting is very nuanced and very layered mm -hmm. in a good way. Like, I, I yeah. appreciate that. I think if I were going to knock the glass on one thing, what keeps standing out to me on those first two sips is that it is kind of thin. Like, it's very, it almost comes across the palate like water, but the finish sticks around. Like, the finish is still going right yeah. now. Like, mm -hmm. it's building, too. Like, it's it stronger now than when I originally swallowed. Yeah. The thing is... It's not, is, it doesn't coat your mouth, but the it, yeah. finish sticks. Right. Yeah. I wish it coated the mouth better. Okay. But yeah. the finish is sticking around. It's just, it's really soft until the finish. And then it starts ramping mm -hmm. with like a subtle spice in the background, like a barrel spice, like an, a woody oakiness. Yeah. And the sweetness, I'm still having a really tough time identifying. I'm going to take one more sip, see if I yeah. can identify that. And we got to get some ratings Let's get on some this. Ratings, so yeah. here we go. Wow, that's very interesting. Yeah. I think I I think I nailed it down. I think it's like a mixed berry jam. It's got just a lot of different berries going on yeah. and it's a little sugary and it's a little, it's like, it's not quite so sweet because there's tart fruit in I there too. I was gonna too. say it's, it's got like raspberries it in it because it's a little tart. Cause I, I can yeah. see that jam, but it's like an unsweetened version. Yeah. It's it's like the the low sugar or the no sugar or something yeah. or another. Yeah. Yeah, because it's there's it's good. for me, I'm picking up the earthiness way more than the sweetness, but yeah. I can see there is some like tart fruit there. Yeah. This glass has promise, especially depending on the price. Yeah. My rating is really on this one particularly. Whatever I say once we find the price out, that's gonna be yeah. very important for yeah. me. Pre-price, I'm a thumbs up on this. I like it. I would like to have a bottle of it if the price is right. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and go thumbs up too, because I really do like what's going on here. But if the price starts climbing too high for me, I'm going to, I'm going to go down to a just Same. okay. And if it goes real high, then I'm going to go full thumbs down. Yep. So let's find out price first and then what we've been drinking. Okay. So in our first sip sample pool, this is number 94. Okay. And the price is? 
$120. I Does that, think I'm going to go just okay on this yeah, personally. Yeah, I'm going to have I'm going to have to go just okay as well just because I like the flavors of it. You're um, thinking about going thumbs down? No, I'm actually thinking about staying at thumbs up. I know it's really? a lot of money and I'm the cheaper one of the two of us. Um, hold on. I think I'm gonna change it to just okay. It's, I mean, it's very good. I just wish it had more yeah. mouth coating viscosity. Yeah, I think I for, would stay thumbs up if it had that. I think for that price point, I want something that has maybe a little bit more oomph to it. Yeah. Just like a smidgy bit. Yeah. So that's, I'm, that's I'm gonna change it to just okay. Okay. All that's right. that's very fair. So right. we're both just okay. Mm -hmm. What are we drinking? We are drinking Blood Oath Packed Eight. Oh wow. Um, and it is a ninety eight point six proof. I could tell it wasn't super proofy. Yeah. Um, and it's oh, I have to turn my phone because I can't see all the words. Is it's, oh, it's, it's at the very bottom, isn't it? It's a finished one. It's ninety four. You said. Yeah. Click it. Um, it's a finished bourbon. In. For eight to fourteen year Calvados, Calvados? finished bourbon. So What's a Cal Blood Oath Pack Eight. I think it's like an apple brandy type of deal okay. or something. So that makes sense. That's where the fruitiness is coming from. Okay. A little bit more of the depth, that mixed berry type of okay. thing. Big shout out to Bill Cavanaugh for sending this to yeah. us. This is a wild sample in a blind because yeah. there's the finishing that you're dealing with, and then you've got the underlying eight to fourteen year yeah. blend that's bringing in some oak. It's a very interesting pour. I, honestly, I know I'm just okay on this, but now having tried it and liking it quite a bit, mm -hmm. knowing that it's such a limited item, mm -hmm. like this is a one-time release, and by the time this video comes out, it's probably going to be long gone. Gotcha, yeah. But if I happen to be in a store that was selling this for $125 or less, I might pick it up just because, mm -hmm. like, that's just okay doesn't mean we wouldn't buy it. It yeah. just means that we, we don't have to have we it. We could have take it or leave it. We so take it or leave it. Or yeah. we would get a pour of it at a bar. Right. I definitely would get a pour of this at a bar for sure. Mm -hmm. If you like what we said about it. And then if I ran across a bottle in the wild and it was for retail, I would absolutely consider buying it. I don't think I would, I don't think I would buy it and break the budget and ask for forgiveness later gotcha. for this one. But if I had the money in the budget yeah. and I saw it, I might be tempted by the rarity of it. And yeah. like I said, it is a very good pour. So Really kind of impressed with this Blood Oath. This is the first Blood Oath of any of the Blood Oaths that we've ever tried. Yep. And it's honestly put it on my radar a little bit. This might be something I start looking at bar menus for mm. to see if they have it and if we can get a pour for a decent price. That's it for today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you've had any of the Blood Oaths before, let us know in the comments below yeah. and what you thought. And let us know how Pact 8 fits within your Blood Oath lineup? Like, is it yeah. one of the best ones you've ever had or is it kind of middling or is it one of the worst yeah. ones you've ever had? Let I'm actually know. really curious. I'm curious as well. Yeah. And then also, if you haven't subscribed and you'd like to subscribe, feel free to do that. We put out four videos a week right now, so you'll be getting lots of content. And then you can also hit that bell icon to be notified when we post a video or we have our monthly live stream. Be good to each other. Until next time. Cheers. Cheers.